Yin Ru Yi So You Love. There are some plots that the Empress Xiao Xian pushes her son Yong Lian to study. Sometimes the Empress Xiao Xian personally teaches Yong Lian because she pushes too much. Yong Lian got asthma. Eventually, Yong Lian passes away at eight. I know my main audience feel the Empress Xiao Xian is so evil. But in real history, this wasn't true. First, the Emperor Xiao Xian wasn't allowed to personally take care of her son. More accurate, she didn't have many chance to see her son. In Qing Dynasty, the prince's education was decided by the emperor. Trust me, after you see Qing prince's Study schedule, you definitely call Qing Emperor Tiger Daddy. Our story should start from the Emperor Shun Zhi, who was the first Qing Emperor controlling the whole China. In his early age, the court was totally controlled by Duer Gun, the Prince Rui of the first rank. Duerguen didn't allow Shun Zhi to get formal education. So, when Duerguen suddenly passed away and Shun Zhi could personally manage the court, Shun Zhi couldn't understand the reports sent by the government officers. Shun Zhi felt the pain of lack of education. So, Shun Zhi set a series of strict study projects for his sons. After Kangxi, Yongzheng, and Qianlong's adjustment, in Qianlong's time, the prince's formal education became a very mature system. Qing prince got formal educations when they were four or five years old. One year, they only had five days break including the New Year, Duanwu Festival, Zhongqiu Festival, the Empress' birthday, and their own birthday. Usually, the prince should wake up at 4 a.m. The first class started at 5 a.m. The release time was at 4 p.m. One day, the prince only ate two formal meals. Breakfast at 7 a.m. and lunch at 12 p.m. There wasn't formal dinner. Dinner was some snacks. If the prince didn't finish the study work on time, he wasn't allowed to eat meals. Under teacher's permission, the prince totally had two time breaks per day. But one break couldn't be over 50 minutes. If the teacher wanted to teach more, he could cancel this break. The emperor would randomly check the prince's study. If the emperor thought the prince didn't study well, both the prince and his teacher would be punished. Briefly, the prince should learn four kinds of classes First was languages. The prince should learn Mongolian language, Manchuria language, and the Chinese. The Emperor Qianlong could speak five different languages. The last Emperor Xuantong could speak English and the Chinese. The second kind of class was learning classic Asian Chinese books especially Confucianism books. This class was designed to teach the prince how to manage the court, the country. The third kind of class was a military class. The prince should learn and practice to ride horse and archery. Kangxi's fifth son, Yin Ti, was a great military general. The fourth kind of class was Thailand class. 
the prince should learn creating poetry, drawing, calligraphy, etc. Qianlong's eleventh son Yongxing was a master of calligraphy. In my opinion, Qing Ruoyu family education system was really successful. Compared with other dynasties' emperors, Qing empress was really professional. In future videos, we will see the story of empress in different dynasties, and you will fully understand why I say Qing empress were professional. Thank you for watching this video. See you soon.